which way you're going, Mr. River. I won't run you over. By the way, this is the New World Gym now, see? Limited edition. But I will sell it. Everything I'm wearing is for sale. I got bills to pay. Could need a spot on this one. Still warming up here. 20 sets for buys and tries.
But Sue, we might follow him into the change room. Come on. We'll just check there's no one in there. Facilities in here to change room. This is like six weeks to go. But this mirror could be better. I'm not sure which is the best lighting in here. I don't really like any of them, so. Doesn't really matter to me. You can see it. That's hanging out in the locker room with Lee. Exciting stuff. Good job, deal. Big 
push now, big push. Get it up. Give it some up. more. No, no. Come on, let's go. Oh, 
Nine right now. Five weeks out, yeah. I'm gonna show my thicker look this time. Thicker look, but hopefully the same lines.
Watch out for the attack dog. Right here. <laughs> Another day. How you doing? Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
Pass up a lot of champions, but I gotta make the top three. Six is thing of the past. Three sixes is a bad owner. Can't stop right there. Gotta go up. Bring it down, bring it down. Stay on it, stay on top of it. Come on. That's it. Come on. Come on. 
I just put on some extra weight and I mean, more concentrated. I was able to stay home a little longer this year. Traveled a lot in the off season and then uh, went from Japan to England to Pittsburgh, Florida, Texas. But I got all, all my traveling out of the way early. I was home for the last 10 weeks and uh, you know, I was able to keep some heavy size on. You know, stay out of clubs a little bit longer this year. And uh, but I'll pick up right after the show. Don't you? Don't you believe? Turkey. Oh, Turkey. 
three hours, yeah. Maybe three hours you eat it? Fifteen hours. Fifteen hours, yeah. That tastes good. I'm craving um, a sundown. I'm craving a sundown trophy. Oh, okay. Mm. Yeah, that's right. Mm. Yeah, baby. T99. Gotta lock your stuff up. Alright, we're gonna train a little bit of chest today. Seems like routine, doesn't it? Every year, same old thing. But this year is gonna be different. Las Vegas, my second home. I'm gonna come in here and do some chest for you. Kind of curious what these other guys did in this last year. Uh, if nothing else, Ronnie Coleman was very inspiring pulling off what he did last year. So my training this year has been nothing but focused and inspiring. We'll get more into that after I knock out some chest for you. Let's rock and roll. Last time I was on the scale, I was about uh, 217 pounds. A week ago, last year on stage, I was about 217 pounds. So I'm right where I need to be in terms of saying last year, I think I might have been about five pounds too much. Um, I'm just gonna warm up with a few more warm up sets before I put some weight on the bar. But ironically, this year, I stayed heavy strength wise. I'm losing the weight, but my strength isn't going down. I'm purposefully training with a little heavier weight, I'm trying to keep the solid thickness and the roundness of the muscle. Well, getting more ripped than I was last year. So I hope to step on stage right around 212. Last year was about 217, so I'm on target. I got about a week more of training, and uh, then after that, it's just straight posing. So let's rock and roll. It's 145 pounds. I usually work my way up to 175 in the off season. But in the off season, I'm about 15 pounds heavier, so I surprised myself a little bit. May not be a lot of weight to the bigger boys, but to me it's a lot of weight. 5'7, 212 pounds. After dieting for three months. Throwing around 145 is kind of impressive. Under the conditions of an hour and a half of cardio, two or three carbohydrate meals, eating six times a day and not really getting much sleep. And I'm drinking about two and a half gallons of water. So any any of the top level bodybuilders understand. You don't get a whole lot of sleep when you're training for a contest. You're always running back and forth to the bathroom, peeing out all the water because we don't have the carbohydrates and sodium in our system to retain that water. So a lot of tossing and turning. I actually start to fall asleep early in the morning, which is time for breakfast. So for me, that's a lot of weight. <laughs> Bench press, probably one of the most overrated exercises there is. <laughs> the number one pec injury exercise there is. How much weight I can bitch? <laughs> so that's the question that doesn't really pertain to bodybuilding. You gotta be strong, there's no question. But trying to monitor your progress by the bench press is the number one mistake you can make. You can ask Richard Safari, Barry DeMay, John Brown, even Kevin Lebroni, and more recently Craig Titus about uh, how important it is to have a 500 pound bench. I mean, it sounds impressive, but at the end of the day, when you take your shirt off, you better hope you got some pecs. Harder. No workout partner this year. Train by myself, but I like it that way. Train by myself, rely on myself. I never really criticize people for having a good support group. You need that. This year I've had a very good support group outside of bodybuilding, which helps take me away from bodybuilding. And uh, what makes my competition preparation even more rewarding when it's all over with, whether it's second or fifth or whatever, is knowing that I did it all single-handedly and by myself, found the desire and drive to get out of bed when I didn't want to, train when I didn't feel like it, overcome relationships and things. Last year I was a little bit preoccupied with the relationship, thinking about getting engaged, getting married, and selling my house and buying a new house and satisfying a second individual. 
And at the end of the day, the, the number one thing that suffered was my passion for life right now, and that's my competition preparation. And ultimately, the relationship dissolved. It didn't work out, and we shook hands and went our separate ways, which uh, added fuel to the fire this year because I didn't have anybody but myself to concentrate on. But my supporting cast outside the gym kept the focus, appreciate all the emails and all the, uh, the fan support and fan letters with my relationship situation because a lot of times that can take you away from your goal and relationships are very demanding. So having to be pulled in one direction or the other is a tough, difficult way to train and get ready for a contest. And I think my, my placement reflected that my mind wasn't into the game last year. This time my mind is focused on the game, focused on my body. It would probably be a lot easier to deal with whatever placement they have in store for me a lot easier because it's all a reflection of what I've done this year since March being in my uh, own house and being on my own um, definitely gave me a new renewed vigor to focus on my goal which is trying to win that trophy or at least get it to do the best I can so I have nobody uh, to point fingers at this year not that last year's experience wasn't pleasurable it was I enjoyed the ride but there was a lot of lessons learned last year that I applied to this year's preparation and uh, more importantly I realized that this is my passion, this is my calling. When lose a draw, I reap what I sell. I like to wear uh, long sleeve shirts, stay warm, break a good sweat. Of course, if you're gonna wear any long sleeve shirts, you gotta make sure they're breathable. If this sounds like a commercial, it is. <laughs> That's why I wear Max Muscle. It's my clothing sponsor. All right. Finish with some cable crossovers. Just a finishing exercise for me. This isn't something I do year round. I picture myself doing a little most muscular pose. So I can squeeze the fibers right at the very end, right in the middle of the pecs. Now I know you want to see, we'll get to that. But uh, this isn't an exercise that's going to build up the pecs. But it'll definitely help rip them up. So if you uh, get into the habit of wearing clothes while you're training, you actually have to feel the muscle being worked rather than trying to look in a stupid mirror, taking your mind off the muscle. So that's why I wear clothes when I train. Obviously we're making a video, so it will come off, but let me just get a little bit more blood in my system. I don't like to be distracted looking at myself in the mirror when I'm training. That's why you see me wearing long shirts and long sleeves when I train, because there's nothing to see. It's all about the mind and muscle control and connection, so. So that's chest in a nutshell. Four simple exercises, four sets, 10 days out from the Mr. Olympia. At this stage, I'm not gonna get any bigger, so I'm definitely training for a little more hardness. I'm adding tanning, and I'm doing a lot of posing after I get done training. I'm cutting back on the cardiovascular. Because with, uh, with my weight where it's at, there's not a whole lot of body fat to come off, just some water weight, and I'll lose that during my uh, sun tanning and my posing. So let's go over to my favorite spot in the gym and hit some poses for you real quick, see what's happening. All right. I, more, I feel more confident this year just by the fact that my preparation was much more spot on. The focus was a little bit more intense. Uh, the goal to keep my strength up and go by the mirror instead of the scale. Having to only worry about Sean Ray instead of someone else. Uh, definitely took a lot of distractions off of the actual eating and the training and the daily grind of what it takes to become a champion. And it gives me even more respect for a guy like Ronnie Coleman, a Flex Wheeler, a Lee Haney, even a Dorian Yates and Nasserell, somebody that can maintain a professional bodybuilding career at this level and have a significant other in their lives and manage to find an equal balance of professional and family life. So that's something that I look forward to, but I, I can't have both. I mean, maybe I can, but my mindset is that of a warrior, only having to deal with me. It makes it a little easier to get up in the morning and train and come home from a bad day and not have someone else to make it worse or uh, having uh, someone else to worry about. Me and my dog, Diablo, are managing just fine. And look, I mean, I feel like a kid in a candy store. The fire's lit, um, I have no injuries. Uh, I feel very confident about what's gonna happen in Las Vegas and win, lose, or draw. Um, this is one contest preparation I can say, wow, you know, not only did I made it, but uh, I still got energy to keep running, so. Uh, I'm very complete as an individual. I'm moving into my new home in Yorba Linda, California, um, building new and stronger ties with my family and friends, like I was talking about earlier, the support group, which is necessary, especially on this lonely, isolated journey to Mount Olympus, trying to overcome the Goliaths, and I'm one of the Davids out there. Um, I'm holding the flag for the little guys, 
um, me and Lee Priest, and uh, I don't think any of us in this year's Mr. Olympia are conceding to the fact that publicity, whether positive or negative, or the judges, whether they're the same ones or the old ones, none of us are believing that uh, any of these people or obstacles can stop us from getting to the top. I certainly don't believe it. I certainly believe that whatever happens come October 23rd in Las Vegas, um, the reflection of what I've done uh, in this gym uh, is admirable for my own yardstick of judging how I prepared in the past for shows. So I'm going to go ahead and take a time out and pat myself on the back and say, Sean, you made it through all the adversity, uh, through all the trials and tribulations of a, a bumpy road in 1998, people writing me off after getting fifth, which I've been before. Uh, in 1991, but I managed to stick up to second in 94, second in 96. I'm looking at number one in 99, and uh, if it doesn't happen for me here in 99, believe me, um, I, there's no finger pointing. There better be better athletes, I know that, and they all better be in condition. So with that being said, I look forward to the challenge and the showdown in Las Vegas. See you in Las Vegas. Due to me shoulder injury that I had occurred many years ago. About 12 weeks out of the Olympia, I decided to you know, try some new concept. So for this year's Olympia, I really didn't lift weights. All I was doing is doing isotension, basically squeezing muscle while I'm lifting weights. You see, throughout the 19 years of my bodybuilding career, I experimented with any kind of training. And I found something that is very interesting. Uh, if you use machine, for example, Contrary to beliefs of all the old timers, all the champions that say only free weight build muscle. I think that if you can hardly perform, let's say six repetitions to your max physical and mental ability on machines, you can actually stimulate muscle more than doing this with the free weights. Reason being is <coughs> machines are constructed like this, they can isolate particular muscle group. Free weights, contrary to that, use a lot of stabilizing and neutralizing muscles. So <clears throat> besides primary muscle group, you use a lot of secondary. So if you fail on six repetitions, let's say doing a free weights, you know, it's not just the like pectoralis muscle, for example, if I'm doing chest that failed, <clears throat> but all the supporting muscles like front delt, side delt, triceps and so on. Uh. If you're doing a, a machine and you fail on six repetitions, by doing isolation movement, most likely you're gonna stimulate yeah. more of a white muscle yeah. fibers when you pick your eyes. Well, this is exactly what I was talking about. Uh, if I was lifting weights, I can usually do stack at 330 pounds for about 20 repetitions. This time I was going just by feeling the muscle squeezing, contracting, and I failed on a sixth rep. Uh, I also want to mention that uh, this year, uh, thankfully, flex equipment moved to my hometown, Temecula. I had a chance to work on a lot of flex equipment, and I used them basically for my whole Olympic preparation. This is a flex incline press, and this is one of my favorites. It really, really hits upper chest you know, to the max. So after I performed that one set to the max, I would try to drop the weight. and perform higher rep set in the same manner. Again, this is, lift, this is lifting, and this is contracting. <laughs> There's that saying, no pain, no gain. I would like to believe there is a great possibility to make great gains without actual pain and uh, in the last three years actually in my career where I've made much progress you know I trained pretty much in similar matter maybe not exactly like for this Olympia and maybe res results are gonna actually prove me wrong or right but I really honestly believe that uh, squeezing the muscle you know beats with lifting weights any day. So here, same, my whole concept in doing this exercise is contracting the pecs muscles. Maybe I can demonstrate this better by taking a straight up. So here, my goal is not to lift weights again, 
just to squeeze my pecs. Ah. Again, throughout the years, I had a lot of personal clients that I was training. When I gave them this concept, and I can swear every single one of them trained this way with very great success. Again, many bodybuilders really lift weights for the sake of lifting. And I said this many times, if they just want to do physical work, you know, do construction, be paid for it. You know, if you want to spend energy, there's many other ways to spend it. If you want to work your muscles out, you really have to be focused 100% on that particular muscle. The targeting muscle should be squeezing in every repetition as hard as you possibly can. This is one of my very favorite chest exercises close to the contest is really this brings out definition striations. It's cable crossover that I believe everybody's familiar with. Again, my main concept here is to forget about weight that I'm lifting and just keep contracting. Normally, when somebody trains, especially 10 days away from Olympia, you can't really hold conversation in between sets. But this kind of training really doesn't exhaust you that much. But you're going to get this incredible pump. And the uh, very next day, I promise you, you're going to have a soreness of your life. After experienced that a few times, I decided to really give a try for a full 12-week preparation for this Olympia. And I can't wait to step on the stage and hear the uh, experts, you know, discussing my, about my physique if I did in fact improve or I didn't come in shape, as this is going to either prove or demand my theory of really isotension lifting, not really, you know, lifting weights. Olympia is going to be over by the time everybody is going to be watching this tape. I can say just a few days ago I had a chance and pleasure to see Ronnie Coleman and Nasser somebody. And as you've seen today, Sean Ray, I can tell you all three guys is in phenomenal shape. It's going to be best Olympia ever. Uh, I believe that Ronnie is going to win again as what I've seen three days ago is just outstanding. If anybody can believe at this stage, he did make considerable improvements, even in muscle mass. Uh, his teeny tiny arms are even bigger now, so you can just imagine what it looks like. And back double biceps, I don't think it's gonna be beaten ever. It's the best back double biceps of all times. So, my pick for this year's Olympia is Ronnie. I haven't seen Flex, and Flex Physique is uh, one of my favorite physiques, but really, as good as, as Flex can be, I don't think it can beat Ronnie. The best exercise for abs. I was preaching this for many years. I really believe in order to get the great abs, you have to make them deep. Any stretching move, like hanging leg raises, Maybe cable crunches would do that. All the other sit-ups, crunches, and so on would just build up the waist and make your waist look thicker. So as you can see here, as I hang, my body weight pulls me down, so it creates a bit deeper gap between abs. I would highly, highly suggest this to everyone. If you want to get deep abs, do this. Now, of course, if you can do too many reps in the beginning, don't worry about it. Strength comes very, very fast. Another thing is, again, important, stretch and squeeze, stretch and squeeze on every rep. You know, most of the people are doing legs all the way through, even week before the show, which I did in the beginning of my career. And then fortunately, I had a chance to go to the European tour. Then for six weeks, I didn't train my legs at all. Interestingly, six weeks later, my legs were more shredded more defined and they didn't lose any size. 
and I contribute this from not really training them heavy, bringing all that blood in, and therefore, you know, they really, you know, get more defined and create all those striations. So ever since then, I really never trained my legs two weeks out. Also, my little secret is, if you see, I'm rotating my foot a little bit, and I believe that creates this separation much more than going just straight. I'm coming for a taping of this battle for the Olympia. They know they're gonna expose at the end, and then they don't bring the posing trunks. I don't know if they like to show off their underwear, or they're hoping for, a, you know, Kevin Klein. But I would say, if you're gonna pose, be ready for it. I would like to say that uh, since June 1st, I became a proud owner of uh, Powerhouse Jim Fullerton. Myself and my partner, Mike Bacolnis, took over a lot of top professionals already training here. I would like to mention John Brown, one of my idols. The reason why I became a professional bodybuilder is John Brown was a guest poser in Yugoslavia back in 1983. And after seeing him perform, you know, I decided this is what I want to do. So John is here training basically every day. Uh, Melvin Anthony, new pro, Tom Prince, you know, needless to say, Sean Ray. He's been training in this gym for years. Thanks to the support of uh, family of Dabish. And I want to say that uh, I really want to thank Will and Noam Dabish for giving me this opportunity to be part of their family. Uh, second thing that I would like to mention is uh, uh, really flex equipment. Uh, all the crew, Borco, Mark, Dan Block, they were all really behind us. Sean Ray in particular and uh, myself, they're helping us out with this gym. And for this uh, preparation for this Olympia, as I said, I didn't really use free weights. I mostly rely on uh, flex equipment and I would like to give them a credit for that. I just want to mention that uh, anybody that is in Orange County, please come visit us here. If you want to do you know, good, serious training, this is the place. We open 24 hours a day. They can contact me here in uh, Powerhouse Fullerton. Phone number is known 714-680-8881. Uh, as I did 65 pro shows, you know, I had so many things to say and to teach uh, people that are interested about different techniques for cab loading, sodium depletion, and so on. So, call me.
I need 20, 20 reps to warm up first. It's nice. The weight is easy. differently. I try to go uh, to the forehead under actually my cap here. It goes a little bit further to the head. You can uh, perform this exercise in different ways. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Easy. Easy. I told Jean-Pierre before he needs a little bit more tanning but in my case I have a tanning bed here at home I'm tanning every day between 20 and 40 minutes you saw the tanning bed That's the reason why I'm so dark naturally I'm anyway darker than Jean-Pierre is but I think uh, you can't be uh, dark enough for, for the stage because the lights are very bright that's true Thank you. 
For example, in this case, it's good to have a training spine because you can hand me the weight and you can take the weight out of my hands. You know, to have a good training partner, it's always important to have the same goals. If he would have, have a different goal than I would have, then it would be kind of different. I would say it would be bad for me. But I like to play as high as possible in the Olympia, so he does as well. So that's a good combination. Four, five, six, seven, two more. Okay. Oh. With your only 70 pounds, how much then? Yeah, 70 pounds. Would 70 pounds do the work? Yeah, it's easy. Okay. okay. We're done here now with exercise. Ooh. I need to do 20 reps because it was the last set, the last exercise, and I try to bring uh, plenty of blood uh, in my triceps. So I think you can do the same, jump here. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, one, two, three, fourteen, fifteen. Come on, five more, six. Seven, easy. Eight, nine, and twenty. Oof. Very good.
1999 IFBB Olympia Weekend Press Conference. I'll start off by introducing the competitors from the USA, Chris Cormier. From the USA, Jake Cutler. From Canada, Paul Dillette. From Yugoslavia, Nasa El Sambati. From Switzerland, Jean-Pierre Fuchs. From the Czech Republic, Pavel Jabalnicki. From the USA, Dexter Jackson. From the USA, Kevin Lebroni. From the USA, Mike Matarazzo. From Australia, Lee Priest. From the USA, Sean Ray. From Germany, Marcus Rule. Yugoslavia, Mark Milos Shorshev. From England, Ernie Taylor. And from the USA, Flex Wheeler. The question that I have for you is, is how do Vicky and you train together, if at all? Well, uh, the answer to the first question is, yeah, we do train together. And uh, since we've been together, we've been training together. It makes it real simple because we have the same interests. I don't have to watch my significant other sit around and eat hamburgers and get fat all the time. While I can only eat chicken breast and turkey breast. <laughs> Refined quality muscle. So as far as the question goes about how much I can bench press, I don't mean to drag this out. Because I really don't know. That's probably why I said all oh, when I first started out. Because I'm in the sets and repetition, and that's what builds muscle, not power. Thank you. Uh, to my recollection, this is the first time that I actually met a couple that qualified for Miss Fitness and Miss Olympia contest. We did, however, since we got together in 96, trained for many shows together. We already did 96 uh, of champions in uh, uh, world fitness. Then she got pregnant and then she started competing. And I continue with my crazy schedule of competing. This is my 66th pro show. The only little problem that we have is 17 month old baby. That now we, we really have to be at babysitters, you know, in uh, different times of the days. When she would be training, I would be a babysitter and vice versa. I, I don't see that to be any different than anybody else. You work, you take care of your family, and that's how it is. It's just really simple. I just changed my total attitude and my total on mental mind frame, and from that everything um, came together from there. You know, basically I just see the glass half empty before, so now I see the glass is half uh, full instead of half empty, and that makes everything else euphoric for me. So that's about it. Other than that, you know, everything is great. So just mentally changed. I don't came back. Is there any plans for me to come back? Uh, that's pretty. That's a pretty popular question. No, I don't think so. You know, I, uh, it was a decision that I had to think carefully about, and I made the decision. So uh, I don't think I'll be reversing that. It's the injury that I had was pretty serious, and it was difficult for me to train after that. And uh, if you can't be at your best, then there's no point competing. You know, you should uh, retire while you're at your best, and that's what I decided to do. So. Um, well, the, the big thing we got going at the moment is uh, Dorian Yates approved supplements, which we're actually launching at the Olympia tomorrow. Um, we spend a lot of time on that. We're launching the, in the US and we already have them in the UK. And uh, it's taken a lot of time, but uh, it's all come together now. And it's, it's, uh, I've put the same effort into that that I did into my bodybuilding career. And we, we want to be the number one, we want to be the best in the market. That's what we're trying to do. Well, it looks to me like. Um, Everybody's really worked hard this year, and uh, it looks like the stand-up competition may have even gone up another level. You know, Ronnie Coleman looked great last year, and uh, I think uh, he's a guy that's got a really good uh, mental approach to the sport, and that's the main thing. That's what separates uh, people from first and second place. And I've got a feeling that it's uh, probably even improved uh, this year. So I'm going to look forward to seeing that, and uh, all the other guys, they know what they've got to do. So uh, I think the stand-up improved overall, and. This is a great 
uh, venue here in Vegas. There's a lot of excitement with the contest sold out and everything. So I'm looking forward to watching the contest. If I had to put money on somebody, I would get all my money and I'd put it on Ronnie Coleman. All right. The same thing. You go down like this, keeping your lower back really straight, and then come up. Looks very good. Really make sure you go slowly down and... Yeah, there, here we are. Beautiful Las Vegas.
Second time is the best time of all. <laughs> Second time lets you know that it wasn't a mistake for the first time around. So it's like the second time is the best one of all. You get it? <laughs> mama O. Oh. Oh, mama O. Oh. Yeah, it is. Good. Mama O. Oh. <laughs> Hi, I'm Marcus Ruhl from Germany. I'm 27 years old and I do bodybuilding since nine years ago. I began with training in 1991 and now it's my first time at the Mr. Olympia. I do my bro card after the German championship. I'm the first professional in Germany who get the bro card without a champion, world champion. Only the German champion get a new bro card. That's terrific for me. <laughs> and now I'm 12th place at Mr. Olympia. I hope I do next Night of Champions compete again and will do the top five again. And so next year I come under the top ten with Mr. Olympia and we see it. The key to build these big muscles are hard training, good, good eat and uh, I live bodybuilding every day. I do two times a day my workout with my partner. I train hard and heavy. And uh, I live bodybuilding every day because I sleep a lot, I live good, drink no alcohol, no smoking, and I think that's the key for my big muscles and big mass. I do work out now 10 years at the car salesman in Germany. And before the Mr. Olympia, I have a good contract with a company, with an American company. And so I can do a full-time bodybuilder now. And that's good for me. I can do a better workout and it's better for the muscles. You can sleep enough, you can do more workout, harder and heavier ever I can. And I think with a good contract I can build more muscles and bigger muscles now. Yeah, my heavyweight yesterday on the competition was 285, 286 pounds, I think so. I'm five pounds bigger as at the Night of Champions in Marine May. And I think I'm a little bit harder in my back and the chest was a little bit bigger, the arms two centimeter more. And uh, I hope now next year at the Night of Champions I'm five pounds heavier again and a little bit harder again. So every time or every day the judges said to me, now Marcus it's good enough to win every single championship and to compete the Mr. Olympia under the top six. I hope so. The fans in America was really fantastic. They come to me and said, Marcus, you're number one. And uh, it's very important for me that the fans stay behind me because they said to me, I'm good enough to be a, a star in bodybuilding and that's very important for me. And I like the German guys and I said, thank you for all my fans. People say, Marcus, you're good enough to be under the top six. Many people say, before I journey to America, I said, Marcus, you're under the top six at the Mr. Olympia, I've said, maybe we'll see. When I get under the top ten, I'm very happy. Now I'm 12th place. I hope the German guy said to me, come on, let's go again and compete under the top ten next year. I hope so.
this year um, I want to improve on everything. Number one, <coughs> I wanted my scoring to be better than it was with the judging last year. Uh, this year I had perfect scores in every round. Last year I had uh, perfect scores just in just three of the rounds. And in the first round, I only, I only, I, I barely got third <laughs> in the first round last year. So I wanted to improve basically on my symmetry. Oh, that was the round that, that uh, I kind of lost out on. So I did that. So that was number one on my list. Number two on my list, I wanted to uh, be harder than I was last year and bigger than I was last year. Uh, I did that also. I did that basically by uh, not having to diet in the middle of the se contest season and have to take off and not lift, be, be able to lift as heavy. So I was able to uh, basically stay strong the whole, whole year and lift heavy the whole year, which allowed me to put on uh, probably about 10 or 15 more pounds of muscle that 10, 15 more pounds of muscle than I had last year at the show, at the Mr. Olympia last year. And I did achieve that. I wanted to be harder, so what we did there was uh, my cardio. Instead of uh, doing like, I think it was, we were doing like 30 minutes two times a day, about eight weeks out, we went to one hour two times a day about 11 weeks out. So, and I did that all the way until uh, the day, Tuesday, Tuesday the, the uh, week of the contest. So I kept my cardio high and also my carbs were a little bit lower than they were last year. Last year I carved up heavy for like two or three days a week. This year I only carved up uh, heavy for maybe once a, one, one time a week and the rest it was just low carbs. So I was able to, to come in harder in this show by doing that, keeping my carbs kind of like on the, on the low side for like six days out of the week and going uh, heavy on them maybe one day out of the week. My cardio, instead of doing 30 minutes two times a day, I was doing one hour two times a day, 11 weeks out. So that, that's, I think that, that helped me come in just a little bit harder than I was last year. Uh, another thing that I wanted to improve on was my posing because I would, really wasn't satisfied with it. What uh, I heard a couple people say about it last year, saying that uh, you know it could have been a little bit better. So instead of me, you know, you know, I worked hard on my posing last year. Instead of me trying to do it myself, I went out and kind of like recruited somebody to do it for me. In other words, I kind of like hired a choreographer uh, to do it for me. Guy uh, who lives in this area has been competing for a while. His name is Josh Todd. He's a amateur level bodybuilder, but he's an excellent poser. You know, you, you can learn a lot of stuff from people, you know, a lot of people. I mean, just because I'm a professional bodybuilder don't mean I won't listen to what an amateur had to say or or what uh, some of, even some of the fans may have to say, you know, I, I try and improve on in any area that I possibly can. Because that's pretty much where you get most of your feedback from the people that's around you. So uh, I was able to, you know, do a little bit better post routine by going out, hiring somebody that, that kind of like a whole lot better at posing than I am. You know, my, I, I use my strengths for myself and my weaknesses, I go out and I recruit people to help me with them. So that's how I was able to kind of come in 
and do a little bit better posing than I did last year. After last year's Olympia, what I did was I was kind of burned down in a way. I had trained so hard and, and I was so stressed out from all the training, all the dieting, you know, because I also did the tour right after the Olympia. My body was just kind of like beat up and tired and exhausted. So what I did last year after the tour, which ended around, I think, the end of October, I took off for like, I mean, I was exhausted. I took off uh, November, uh, December, and January, and then go near weight. Then train, then go to the gym. I didn't do uh, cardio. I didn't do anything, you know. And my muscles are here t to stay pretty much, as far as I'm concerned. I've been training for uh, 20 some odd years, almost 25 years now, and I don't think taking off for three months, I'd lose anything. It's just like anything you build. I mean, you can build a car. Just because you don't drive it for three months doesn't mean it's gonna, gonna just deteriorate and not function when, when you get ready to use it again. And that's pretty much how I feel about my body, you know. I, I, I built it up to the point where, you know, I'm comfortable with it. Uh, I've been, I'm genetically gifted in a way that Hey, I can take off three months, and my, my my muscles are pretty much not going to go anywhere. They're not going to leave me, and they're going to pretty much be the same once I start back training. And that's the way it was. And uh, I, I started back training in February. I think maybe the first week I was a little I was a little sore, but I wasn't sore in the fact that it hurt me to train the next week after that. So I, I think I was sore for maybe about a week, and that was it. You know. But I was able to get back where I had left off in probably about two to three weeks. So I was back like full force training real hard in three weeks after I'd taken off for about three months. I pretty much picked off where I left off last year. And, uh, I, you know, I think that allowed my muscles to uh, kind of like recuperate or regenerate. And uh, basically, just just relax <laughs> and to take it easy. And uh, I think it allowed me to also, you know, just put on just a little bit more size because they were so relaxed and so uh, regenerated from that layoff. And that's pretty much probably that's going to be the same. That's going to be the think policy that I adopt from now on because in the past, you know, I've always just. As soon as my season was over with, I just take maybe a week off and, and just jump right back in it real hard and, and real fast and not allow my muscles to rest and recuperate and regenerate and all that. So I'm on, I think this is the policy that I'm gonna stick with. And I think that I can do this basically, basically because you know I got real good genetics. I got 25 years of hard training behind me and I don't think it's gonna hurt my body or hurt my muscles to, you know, just to let them uh, breathe, to let, let them take a rest, you know, just, it's just like going on a vacation, except it's a very extended vacation. <laughs> and uh, I probably, I'm gonna do the same thing this year, uh, take off November, December, January, and, uh, you know, just come February, just get ready for the Olympia again. Uh, starting February, probably February the 1st, you know, I'm quite sure the Olympics is going to be in October. So it's going to give me a, enough time to train and hopefully get better and maybe a little bit bigger for next year. Uh, so last year I was 248, this year I was 258. So about exactly right at 10 pounds heavier than last year. <laughs> it really is not really worth it, <laughs> the stress that you put on your body to to get in condition. It's not worth taking a chance on winning $100,000. Mm -hmm. It's better to let's save your body for the long run. <laughs> These are the best two trophies in the world. <laughs> the two uh, Sandals, 1998 and 1999 Mr. Olympias. So here's all from all those hard 
25 years of training, this is this is the success that that pays off and, and that can't be beat from it. Right here in front of you. <laughs> Give me a little pause right there, Flex. Right here. Okay.
Yeah, good. Twist your upper body, same one. Twist your upper body slightly more. Towards you? Yeah. See your, yeah, that's better. Good. Great, good shot. Wow. Great. Yeah, that's good. Oh, twist your upper body more. That's good. One more. Twist your upper body. You're standing a bit more. Same one. Same one? Yeah. Almost done. Just okay. one more. One more? Yeah, one more. Another. Take another pose. Uh, you have something like that that you do? How or? about a crab? Yeah, why not? That's all done. Good. Thank you. Excellent. Good Thank you. All right. Yeah. Same one with the arm down there. Nice. Now I'm going to pick up because I know you have. Just a few more. Do whatever you, you feel like. All right. Nice. Twist your upper body. Keep going. Caps. Beautiful, Minos. Beautiful. Twist. Good. Your ab shot. <laughs> yes, ab. Oh, great, Milo. Great. One more. Good. Keep a little bit. That's good. I got it.
Kind of eight. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Jeez, everybody almost got their own, huh? Oh, God, who ordered this garbage? Man, they screwed us and we paid for it. No, this is cool. <laughs> well, I'll, we'll mix it up. No one can just eat one of them, the whole thing. We'll mix it all up. It's cool. I'll start off from there. Some of these in there. What was the jacked up one? You know what? I think they should come out. What was the shotgun? Uh, what's the name? Hmm. You don't need to get that, bro. No, this is definitely what all the fans like to see. How come Sean Ray got the nice and popping eyes on stage? Man, this, this is, is footage that you'll never see. 